Hi there, and welcome to another video. Storing data in your apps is something that I think most applications will be confronted with in one way or another. Because when I talk about storing data, I don't necessarily talk about storing a huge database that's gigabytes worth of data, but it could also just be a couple of Boolean flags, like has the user seen your onboarding flow or did they register for an account yet? In this video, we're going to take a look at different options that you have when you need to store data, because there are several options available to us and not all options are made equal. If you're not subscribed yet to the channel, make sure that you change that right now by subscribing and liking this video so that you are notified whenever I upload in the future. When you want to persist data in your app, you're going to want to make sure that you pick the right solution for the kind of data that you are storing. You want to keep several things in mind like security, performance, portability, future growth, convenience, and all of these kinds of things. Each of these considerations will ultimately guide you towards where you should be storing data for your application. And most likely you're going to end up with a mix of different storage solutions, depending on what your app does. I like to say that there's about five places that we can store data on iOS. One of them is user defaults. This is probably the one that you're most familiar with or one that you've used, maybe without even realizing it. Because as soon as you use the app storage property wrapper in a Swift UI view, you're already putting data inside of user defaults. It's really that simple. User defaults is great for small, simple bits of data, but it doesn't lend itself really well to other types of data, as we'll see throughout this video. Another place to store data would be the keychain. The keychain is quite similar to user defaults in that it's intended for simple, small pieces of data. But with one big difference, the keychain is much more secure than user defaults. User defaults doesn't do any encryption. Anybody can access your data. So you probably don't want to be storing things like passwords or API tokens in there. Whereas, use, whereas keychain is safe for that. Another option that we have is the file system. Uh, this is simply writing files to disk. Um, a document-based app will do this a lot. But you could also be doing this to cache API responses or other uh, simple or quick pieces of data in your app. You can also use something like core data or Swift data or GRDB or SQLite directly. Um, what I'm signaling here is mostly that you can use an on-device relational database to persist data. Could also, of course, be something less relational, but it's a database nevertheless, right? If you're using that, then uh, I will be referring to that as something like core data, but it could be anything at all. And lastly, you could also be storing data remotely. Uh, this isn't something that you do on device, but this could be a consideration for you to not have data on your device at all, or only have very little data on your device. Let's go through these different options one by one to talk about some of their pros and cons and strengths and weaknesses. And let's start with the user defaults. User defaults is a very lightweight store that's used for small, simple data structures. For example, booleans, numbers, strings, these kinds of things work really well with user defaults. You could also store blobs of data in there, but I would advise that you don't do that. User defaults is really intended for small, simple pieces of data. Uh, and that immediately sort of becomes obvious when you realize that you can't query user defaults. You can't say, oh, I'll just put all of a user's to-do items in there and get items that were due today. You can't ask user defaults for that. You could ask it for all of the to-dos if you put those in there, and then you'd have to filter in memory. And this isn't great, and if you find yourself doing something like that where you store an array of data and user defaults, you're probably not using it as intended. Because it's really intended to be more like a preference store, right? It's really intended so that you can put simple pieces of data for a user in there. What's their dark or light mode preference? Did they see your onboarding? Uh, did they register for an account? These kinds of things. They're simple, they're quick, they're easy to ask for from user defaults. They don't need big performance or anything like that. So it's really for these kind of preference-like information. We can also use the keychain. And the keychain is in many ways quite similar to user defaults in that you typically use it as kind of a key value store for lightweight pieces of data 
and you don't use it as your database as a whole. The key difference though, is that Keychain is intended for sensitive data. This could be personally, personally identifiable information like email addresses, for example, but it could also be a user's API token or even a password. You should always be asking yourself, should I be persisting this in the first place? And if the answer is a convincing yes, then Keychain is where you should be putting it because Keychain is encrypted. So it's pretty safe to put your API tokens or other sensitive data in there. Um, and it has an extra layer of security compared to user defaults. A nice bonus, I would never use this as an argument for persisting something in, use, in, in Keychain, but Keychain does persist across installs. So if you have token-based authentication in your app, and you persist a token in the keychain, the user uninstalls your app, reinstalls it, the token is still going to be there. Pretty nice, but I would never use that as a reason to go for keychain. So another option that we have is storing files to disk. And this one is more interesting, I would say, because this one allows you to put large amounts of data in a file. And it can be a nice way to quickly write some data over to the file system, but it's not a database, right? So you should think really hard about what you're putting in that file and whether it makes sense to put it on the file system. Of course, you don't get any security like the keychain does. So if it's sensitive data, don't write it to disk, write it to the keychain instead. Usually what you'll do is you'll persist data in a JSON format. At least that's been my experience when I find myself writing files to disk as a means of storing data in my app is usually a bunch of JSON files. It's also important to make sure that any data that you put in um, a file in the file system can be read into memory relatively efficiently. This means that you probably don't want to be loading a 100 megabyte JSON file into memory, although it could be manageable, but it is sort of a cutoff where I would say profile that, see how it performs, because probably it's not performing that great because you're going to be parsing that and holding everything that's in that file in memory. You also should make sure that you don't need any complicated queries. Like if you're persisting a user's to-do items again, and you want to ask for all the items that are due today, the user might have accumulated thousands of items over the years, and you're now asking it for a small subset. You have to load everything into memory, perform filtering in memory, and find what you need. Not the best experience for your user, most likely, and something that a relational database would be much better at. It is perfect, though, for things like caching network calls. Um, I've used it for that a lot. When I get a response back from the network, I write that to a JSON file, and that allows me to implement some kind of offline capability relatively quickly. So when should you use a local database? Because we've gone from user defaults to the keychain to JSON files on disk, and now we're at databases. Well, databases like Core Data, Swift Data, GRDB, or just plain SQLite are super useful for large amounts of data. A large amount of data is probably something in the hundreds of megabytes or even tens of megabytes. It's usually a lot of records and it becomes a problem to put all of that in memory in one go. So you want some way to efficiently query your data and to make sure that you can say, well, I have a couple thousand items in the database, but I'm only interested in probably about 10 of them. So get me only those. And then only those items will actually be loaded into memory. That's a lot more efficient, a lot faster than having a JSON file that holds everything that could be in your database. Another benefit of using something like Core Data is that you get model validation to some extent. So Core Data or Swift Data or GRDB or even SQLite itself will make sure that you don't insert incomplete objects. If you say there must be a relationship from A to B, you try to persist your, data, your object without that relationship, the safe is not going to happen. So that could be a nice layer of validation as well. And lastly, it's also really useful if you want to change your model over time that most relational databases allow for some strategy of migrating data from the old format to the new one. And when you're using something like Core Data or Swift Data, you even get that for free entirely because those frameworks try to migrate your data model automatically. So you don't have to do anything for that, which is really useful. And it makes sure that your users don't lose any data in the process, which is a big deal.
So lastly, let's talk about storing data remotely. What if you don't want to put anything on the device at all? It's really the pinnacle of portable data, right? If you need your data to be transferable between devices and platforms, then remote storage is going to be involved in one way or another. It's also really useful when you need a single source of truth, right? When you're persisting data and you want to say this one place on the internet is the real source of truth for this data. And then every other app or every other client can look at that data, communicate with that data, read it, maybe even write to it. But once it's on the server, it's true. And that can be really useful, especially when you have multiple clients reading from the same data set. It's also really useful to store your data remotely when you want to share it between users, right? If you use CloudKit or a custom backend solution, it doesn't matter. Put the data in your remote store and then multiple users can look at that data, work on it, work with it, use it, do whatever you need to do. Uh, that would mean sharing for your use case. So how do you actually go and make a choice between all of these? Because you now kind of know what each one of them is good at, but how do you figure out which option is going to be the best one for you? And first, I would like to say, think about security implications. Is this data that you even want to have on your device? And if so, do you want it to be encrypted or not? But passwords are a really good example. Um, I know some apps would store your password in the keychain. You could actually ask yourself, do we need to store this password or can we send it up to a server and exchange it for a token and then persist a token instead? Right? These are all sort of security considerations that you need to have in mind when you're trying to decide where to store data, especially when you're comparing user defaults to the keychain. The keychain is where your sensitive data should go. User defaults is where your simple, I don't care if somebody sees this kind of data should live. You also want to think about the kinds of data that you're going to persist. Maybe you have only a single user object in your app for now, so you want to put that in user defaults. But if somewhere on the roadmap you could envision yourself wanting to store more than one user, maybe go for a relational database from the get-go. Or find yourself that intermediate solution in a file, in the file system, because that's a lot more efficient than user defaults in a lot of cases. If you know it's only going to be a single entry, user defaults might work fine, right? So this is sort of where you need to think about what could the future hold and how will that impact my data storage needs. And you should always plan for change, right? If you decide to store your data somewhere for now and you change your mind later, you want to be able to do that. However, I would say don't go overboard with that. If you might change, but you really don't have any reason to change because you're pretty sure that what you're doing is good, but who knows what the future brings. Probably don't go overboard in architecting some layer that will abstract away your persistence completely, but also don't expose everything directly into your views, right? Find yourself that middle ground where everything works and plan to evolve over time. If you're choosing to go for a file-based storage in the beginning, it is relatively likely that you might want to move to a core data or GRDB store. If you've opted for a core data store in the beginning, then probably you're not going to switch from core data to GRDB and back again really quickly. So you might want to focus mostly on efficiently querying core data instead of making some intermediate layer that allows you to swap out stores on a whim, right? If you're into that stuff, make sure to do it. If you're a single person working on an app, it's probably not the best use of your time. So hopefully this video helps you decide where to store data a little bit. There's a lot of options available to us, a lot of pros and cons. Uh, personally, I find that typically I use a mix of user defaults, keychain, and a relational database, and probably something remotely and maybe I'll even write to the file system for caching, right? Use bits and pieces. It's totally okay to mix and match. Put data where it makes sense instead of forcing yourself to put everything in a single source of truth because every different kind of database or every different storage solution in your app is going to have a specific purpose that you can use it for.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it. If you're not yet subscribed, make sure to change that right now. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.